Like if us not doing this right, do I think I'm cutting you from my life? No more. I suppose human nature says you want to feel a little bit missed if you're not at work, but Melbourne went about their business on Saturday. They absorbed the interruptions of the week, both in the coaches box and out on the field, and continued on their winning way. Not so much in Adelaide on Saturday, where the Crows misstep really for the first time this season, blown out early by the Giants. Our timing's a little bit off here, but there's more than just Saturday in the sum total of what the Crows have been able to turn in in their development through seven rounds. So let's head into isolation as a starting point. Simon Goodwin, great to have you with us on 360. Yeah, evening, Jared. Evening, Robbo. Good to be on. And over at Crows headquarters, Matthew Nix. Uh, Matthew, great to have you with us. I appreciate it, guys. Good to be here. Uh, first things first, how are you, Simon? Yeah, no, feeling good, uh, Jared. It was certainly a tough few days at the start, but uh, the health's feeling good and feeling 100 step back to normal. But it's it's certainly been a different week in, in isolation, obviously, with the team playing and, and preparing and, you know, the outbreak that took place. But, uh, no, the health's feeling 100% now. Myself and Jared had a competition at the start of the show, Goody, because when you're in ISO, you just sit in your room and watch TV. And we guessed how many games of football you watched Friday, Saturday and Sunday and wrote it down. Can you tell us how many games of football did you watch? Does that include VFL, Robbo? <laughs> <laughs> it does include <laughs> VFL. <laughs> I'm the club It team. includes VFL. It was six, um, but it was five games of AFL. So there were a couple of clashes, but, you know, that's the great thing about being in isolation. You get a bit of time out, it's relaxed, but really watch as much footy as you can and um, just look at it from a different perspective as what you would normally. I'm really disappointed. I had you down for seven and a half. I had six and a half. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we might have a fraction overclubbed. But what about, did you find anything on Binge that you've been watching? Uh, I've been watching a bit of Mystery in Between. Um, little series on, uh, I think it's on Apple actually. So um, been able to catch up on a few things. But the week's been pretty busy actually. You know, it hasn't, it's gone pretty quickly. Obviously been pretty engaged with the coaches and, and what's been happening at the footy club by Zoom. But there has been a bit of time just to take some rest as well, which I think at this stage of the year is, you know, quite handy for a senior coach. How, how did the match unfold for you? Did, were you dialled right into it? What did you do? Oh, look, I was dialled into the coach's box, but it was certainly a very different experience. You know, I was sitting there in my Ugg boots and um, <laughs> having some snacks and watching the game. It was certainly a, a, a very different experience. And, and to be honest, I really wanted to let the coaches do their job. You know, it's certainly not always about the senior coach. It's about a, a coaching group and, and giving guys opportunity to really step up and embrace different roles and, and see the resilience of the footy club, both from a player perspective, but also a department perspective. And um, I was really proud of our footy club, the way they operated from throughout the week, what we had to deal with and um, the change in roles and how we were able to keep things really stable. And um, you know, I wanted to really see that unfold and it's experience that we'll be able to tap into in future. Matthew, we saw Ben Rutt before and you talked about the frustration. I watched your press conference at the weekend and you know, I was disappointed in Adelaide. I know that doesn't mean anything to you, but... I. It was a really big game for your football club. It had been so many positives, and here was an opportunity to really lay down some uh, foundation. And how, how was the review? When did you do the review today? How, how was it, and what did you come out with? Yeah, we reviewed tonight, actually, in this room. A bit of blood still on the walls. But, <laughs> no, look, we, we reviewed. We, we had a, a good look at, really, what we put out there on the weekend. It was really disappointing, unfortunately. We met, a, we met a pretty good side and we gave them a sniff. I think if you give the Giants uh, any time and space, then they'll make you pay. And that's what happened on the weekend. But it, by no means is that the trend of our, our season to this point. And that's the key for us going forward. We, we don't want to lose that positive momentum that we had. We, we want to bounce straight back. Um, so that was the review tonight. It was really around, you know, how close and, and how far away you can be at the same time. Um, we've got the areas we need to work on, the areas we didn't get right on the weekend, and we'll have to get we'll have to bring that against Carlton this week. So you talk about you know you gave a good team too much space, and you've been really good at, at pressure and energy, and so so what did the players say? Why wasn't it there? Yeah, we. I mean, it was a lengthy review, but we we really had an agenda on it. We wanted to finish that review and know exactly what it was. Um, it's a mindset. Unfortunately, what it is, we came into that game with a different mindset to what we had via the Bulldogs. Now, the key to us is putting our, our finger on exactly what, why that is. Um, that's our challenge. We're, we are a young, developing group. 
We've, we've had a ruthless mindset now for a good month. Yeah, yep. we lost, I think we won three out of the last four prior to that game. Uh, we tackled, we, we took it to the Bulldogs. We did the same with Richmond. Um, we weren't able to back it up for, for whatever reason. Now, we've, we've looked at a fair bit of the vision. Uh, it's reasonably stark in that vision that we went away from what we'd been doing really well. The, the key now is to, to get back to it. Um, easier said than done. I know I heard you guys talking about a number of other sides before us. It's, yeah, it seems easy from the stands. Why don't we just go harder? Why isn't there more effort? But um, it's something that we pride ourselves on, so we want to get back to that DNA. Simon, I'm so curious when you got to watch your team at work. So we're full of admiration for the way the Demons play. How did you take it in? Were you critically analysing it or did, were you able to sort of absorb um, what, what you've built together? Yeah, look, I was probably a little bit more emotional um, sitting at home on the lounge room than what I would be normally at the game because you're not actually really in the moment. You know, it was very quiet here. Um, there was really no noise. So um, I was certainly able to analyse the game and, and give some input when needed, but it was a different experience. You know, I think there's nothing like being at the footy, being involved, having the competitive juices really flowing, you know, being amongst your team, amongst the, the team that you're going out to battle with. So it was a completely different experience. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, as I said, you know, you see Adam that's on screen now, you know, he, he did a fantastic job, you know, for the week to get our team prepared along with the other coaches and, and steer the ship incredibly well on game day. And, you know, he's going to be an up-and-coming coach that goes and has a, a really long senior coaching career. I know you want to ask about the game. Can, can I just ask, was there any stage during the week where you were fearful that you might get wiped out beyond, so the coach and five players, were you on tenor hooks to go, well, what if this becomes eight or ten or twelve? Oh, without question, on the Wednesday when we lost nine people from our department in one hit, um, you know, there was a, a, a certainly an increased risk for the rest of the week. You know, there was alarm bells going off everywhere at that point. We had five staff and, and four players go down on the one day. So um, they had the potential to blow out to probably another, you know, 10, 10 possibly, you know, within our department from a, from a staff and player perspective that haven't had COVID at this point. And, um, you know, we're lucky enough that we haven't had too many reinfections at this point. So there's a number of people that still haven't had it, but... Um, you know, there was that risk that it was going to blow out to a few more, but, you know, they did a great job to contain it. We changed our program slightly and, and made sure we could try and mitigate the risk where possible. Um, Matt, we don't get an opportunity to talk to you too much. So I, I want to know, for, for a building young team, there's a lot of talk about a, a mid-season trade period. If the AFL asked you, would you what, what would you do? Would you say, yes, that would be fantastic for the game? Or would you say, no, we, we play with what we uh, started the season with? Great question. Look, I think the challenge with that is we like to you know, back in the group that we've brought in. I think it comes back to then a lot of around injury, uh, you know, what clubs are affected by injury. And um, touch wood, we, we don't go down that path too much. We have lost now, you know, Sloaney for, for the season this year. Um, you know, we lost a couple on the weekend through concussion. So it can change really quickly. But I think what you start to do in... I guess in that moment is look for replacements. Uh, how can we look at a trade during the year if you happen to have a Ruckman go down? Um, I understand where the conversation starts, but I think part of that is list management when you build your list at the start of the year. You know, we put our list together, we look at everything that could possibly uh, go wrong or every, every single scenario and we want to have a plan in place in case we lose a player here or there. And we really love the, the group that we've got together at the moment, the depth that, that we've got in our group. We've got a the SNFL side at the moment that are really competing well. They sit right up near the top of the ladder and, and are winning games of football. And that's something we didn't have you know, 12 months ago or, or a couple of years ago. So we're beginning to build that depth in our list and we're really pleased with it's at, where it's at at the moment. So probably not, Robert. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. Robert, to answer your question. Probably no mid-season draft at this point in time, um, but it can change pretty quickly. It's really uniquely Australian rules, I think. Y you coaches try and build trust and you talk about those words all the time from the start of the pre-season to the end of the season, let's build trust in the group, build trust in the group. You're not going to flick players out. For example, like Br Brody Smith on the weekend, what he did on the weekend and to knock himself out playing a game of football, and that's why everyone claps. When players do that, you've given your all to the contest. What, did, were you concerned straight away? How did you think when Brody Smith knocked himself out? Yeah, initially really concerned because... Um you know, hit the ground from a good, you know, metre and a half up uh, and he was horizontal. So, the, you know, our initial thought was, is he OK? And, I, and there was, you know, he was convulsing. It looked like it from where we were at one point. So 
um, you know, to get the news back that he was OK. We obviously knew we, we'd miss him with concussion for, for the next week, but that was the least of our worries at that point. And Brody's been in some really good form. Yeah. You know, he's, he's taken the reins uh, as a captain, um, you know, so stepped into that role uh, that Sloney, you know, with Sloney going down. So, yeah, it was, it's one of those things where your initial thought as a coach, uh, as a footy department, is, is about the player's health first and foremost. But um, he's recovered really well. He's remarkably uh, up and about today. So that's a really good sign for him. Do you ever use, if you look over your right shoulder there, Matthew, there's a photo of uh, Simon Goodwin on the wall. What is that wall at the Crows? I didn't realise he was there. I <laughs> thought we did that one for Smarty. <laughs> no, that was for you, Goody. Um, oh, look, this is one of our honour boards, one of our walls. This is our 300 and 200 gamers. Obviously a significant part, a significant part of this footy club and we, um, you know, we do a lot of work in around acknowledging and, and recognising our past. Um, yeah, even, even back to a Sanford level, we get some of the greats of the club to come back that have represented teams like South Adelaide on the weekend. We had Mark Bickley come and present an award to our, our you know, best player on the ground for the Sanford. So we're, we're big on the history. And, and I thought tonight I'd come and sit in front of this one just because <laughs> the 275-game superstar... Um, you know better than me, me. next year. I've got a picture of a pair in isolation on the wall. You better... Did he say it looks like his head? <laughs> Are you, saying, are you saying that's me? <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Um, uh, look, the Tom McDonald moment, Simon. Um, so we've had a laugh about it on the outside. Some people think it's serious. Some people think it's frivolous. How does it occur to the coach? Oh, it's like, oh, dear, he's not, he's not going to take it, is it? And, uh, <laughs> and when he does, you just think, oh, God, I hope he doesn't juggle it. But in, in seriousness, yeah... You have a lack of awareness at that point of where the goal line is and there are balls that bounce the line and bounce back. And to Tom's, you know, he took the responsibility to take the mark and, um, you know, I'm sure Harms is spewing that it wasn't a goal for him. But uh, I think Tom in the end did the right thing, not knowing where the goal line was and actually and, and actually took the mark. So, Goody, at home, you're in your room and you're watching the game. Have you got access to the coaches or have you got access to the runner? Uh, I've got access. I, I, I purely spoke to Alan Richardson, who I'd normally speak to on game day uh, via the headset on, on ground level, um, and then I'd connect to Ooze when needed. But I spoke to Alan, um, had no input on the bench or the runner of any of that description. I only really chimed in um, when needed. You know, we had good, honest discussions with Richo about where the game sat, and the boys are doing a fantastic job and seeing the game incredibly well. So I left them be and had some really broader discussions in, in the breaks. Yeah. So this, this separate. There's been much has been made about um, McGuinness playing on, on on Langdon. When you're watching it on the box, did you get a full understanding of what was getting how that match out was being played, or were you relying on your coaching box to fill you in about what McGuinness was doing to Langdon? Oh no, those matchups were pretty much you know identified really early in the game, and you could see it pretty clearly on the vision about what was taking place and. Um, you know, our coaches have been prepared to how to manipulate certain situations, whether it be certain guys getting tagged, whether it's Petrarca, Oliver, Lever, May, Salem, these type of guys, and, and Ned's another one. You know, and we'll find a way as a coaching group to try and be able to manipulate that to help the team. And, um, you know, I thought Ed worked his way through that incredibly well. You know, he didn't deviate from the plan that was in place and, and still was able to execute his role. Um, clearly didn't have the possession that he needed but or wanted or, or would normally get, but that's not the only part of his game that's important to us is it's the system and, and the process of doing your role. We'll keep our coaches' night going shortly with Simon Goodwin and Matthew Nix. We'll broaden out a little on the issues confronting the game this week. Uh, tomorrow night, he's an old 360 favourite, having spent a few years with us at the desk. Nathan Buckley, he's going to bring his own special guest to the desk tomorrow. forward for a The Moment brought to you by PointsBet It was one of those moments where the real world infiltrates our footy arena so two men who have lived a similar journey twice afflicted with cancer. One is back and thriving, and for the other, he's eyeing a return later this season, Sam Doherty and Ben Cunnington. So that's the camaraderie 
of the game at its purest. A beautiful moment ahead of... It's good an image we're going to see this year. It is. Uh, Simon, your football club for the Sir Doug Nichols round is going to be known as the NAM Football Club and the Guernsey was presented to, to the public today. What, what, what does this mean to the club and its players to be able to do this? Oh, it's something that we're very proud of. You know, we're um, you know, part of our reconciliation plan. This has been in the pipeline for a couple of years and it really is to bring some education, awareness to the Indigenous culture and be really proud of being at the forefront of that. And I know it's really important to our players, our past players and the Indigenous community. And I just think it's a fantastic initiative that the club's gone down this path and you known as the NAM, NAM Footy Club for, for a few weeks for the Sir Doug Nichols round. And, um, you know, you can see our players are very proud of what, what, they're, what they're about to entail. I heard Stephen May talking about it today. We got him on the TV at the moment. Goody. I mean, the thing about football is football. You play football, but when you can see your players standing up for a for a national cause and something that's really strong to them, and that's where you see the maturity and growth in individuals, and Stephen May certainly has done that as an adult. Yeah, he has, and you can just, when you listen to him speak, you can see the pride that he has for his footy club going down this path, and, um, you know, he's been one of the guys that's been at the forefront of really developing this, along with Matty Whelan, who, who drives all our Indigenous programs, and as I said, it's something that we're really proud of and we're looking forward to it. Uh, the Cairns game on the weekend. So you've both had games in Cairns. Um, Matty Nix, you were part of a, a similar one last year. Um, do we have to be careful? So I think there's a bit of capital city conceit going on at the moment, but do we have to be careful around the time and the time of year that these games are scheduled? Oh, I think we do, more for the spectacle than anything. I think it's, it's, a, it's challenging conditions. It's almost as wet weather football as you can get. Um, we enjoyed playing in that. It was quite a scrap. And I think it, from memory, we, that was a Riley Philthorpe kick over the shoulder that, that pinched that one for us. So mm. what it does give you, it seems to give you close games. Um, you know, obviously on the, on the weekend with uh, the Port Saints game, it was another close one. But from a spectacle point of view, I think it's challenging. It's, it's basically real, really wet weather. The ball's like a cake of soap. So we, our players found it really challenging. Um, whether we can get that game on during the day, maybe make it a little bit different, but um, yeah, it's a challenge for us. And Simon, the reality of, of selling a game for a financial outcome, which serves the whole club, including the football department, so this is something that, that you've lived as a coach. How all-in do you have to be to be able to pull it off successfully? Yeah, look, well, you know, as a footy club, we've been going to the Northern Territory now for, you know, seven or eight years, and um, you have to be all in as a footy club. It's a total buying from the, the senior coach through to, to the board, through to everyone at your footy club, and you've got to make it your home, you know, and you've got to make it a, a territory that you want to be a part of, and it's a, it's, a, it's a competitive advantage, and that's what you try and do internally, and um, every club's at different stages with their development about where they need to take the game and, and the AFL want to continue to take the game to these regions. So we have to be open to it. Can we do it better? I think we'll continue to look at that. Lewis Young from Carlton has been suspended for one week. Matty Nix for front-on contact to the body. What's your gut reaction to that? You, you, you don't seriously want me to make a comment on it. I think we played them this weekend. <laughs> I, I, it's a hard one. I'm, I'm not obviously going to talk through that incident. I think it's a challenging part of the game, though. We, if you remember back, I was actually just talking about the Cairns game. We had Dave McKay in, in, yeah. in an incident where yeah. um, we felt we just had to go into bat for him because um, the game is it's split seconds, and, and what we're able to do by watching the footage back is is slow that right down to thousands of a second and have a look, you know, what, what should you have done here? I think it's easier said than done. These players are, you know, being told we want to play on the edge. We, talk, we talked earlier about effort. You know, just give effort and intensity. Well, it's hard then to switch that on and off in that split-second moment. But I, I won't make comment around that particular one because it's probably not appropriate for me to. Simon, did you think forceful front-on contact that wasn't high, that was to the body, was a suspension? So I, I, I can't wait for tomorrow night's case to find out. Yeah, look, I, I, I didn't think so, um, you know, especially to the body, but... Um, you know, I guess we'll, we'll all sit here and look at the, what happens tomorrow night and, and make a verdict from there. But, um, you know, I think when you choose to bump, it's always dangerous. And, you know, we've spoken about this a lot, that when you choose to bump, you run the risk of not only injury and impact. And um, I think that's, that's the lesson for all of us that, you know, as a footy club, we try not to bump where, where we don't need to and um, try and avoid these situations where possible. 
It's great to catch up with both of you. Uh, Simon, thanks for uh, allowing us inside during isolation. Good luck getting back out into the real world. Why have you got a pair? <laughs> what is that What is that painting? What is it? Uh, I don't know, Robbo. I might have to do something about it. It's just uh, it's meant to be pretty pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Probably costs an absolute fortune. <laughs> oh, oh, it has been good having some company, so thanks for having me. And, Matty, thanks, thanks for moving us inside that in the sanctum. That's a beautiful setup for the Crows. Uh, my pleasure.